and welcome to today's Steris Tech Talk on key considerations for industrial sterilization. Steris Tech Talks are a series of webinars covering subjects relating to gas and radiation sterilization processing and the laboratory testing and validation services which support these processes. My name is Ashley Marut and I'm the Associate Product Manager for Steris Applied Sterilization Technologies. I'll be the host for today's event. Our presenter today is Brian McAvoy. Brian is the Senior Director of Global Technologies at Steris Applied Sterilization Technologies. A microbiologist by original qualification, he has 20 years experience in the area of healthcare sterilization and has held various technical operations and leadership roles covering all the available sterilization modalities. All attendees are on mute for the presentation. However, we would like to encourage everyone to submit questions using the questions function on the GoToWebinar control panel. Questions will be answered following the presentation. Today's presentation will be recorded and uploaded to our Steris Applied Sterilization Technologies YouTube channel. Please note that continuing education credits are not provided as part of this webinar. And now over to Brian to begin the presentation. Thank you, Ashley. Can you hear me okay? Yep, sounds good. Perfect, thank you. Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Um, today I have the great pleasure of talking to you on the topic of key considerations for industrial sterilization. And this webinar will serve as a wrap up of our 2020 Tech Talk series. Um, on the right hand side here, I'm showing the agenda uh, for today's webinar. And in the, the time allocated, I hope that it's an informative supplement to the series of tech talks that have been provided uh, with you know, hopefully some insights and a bit of a recap of what's been discussed throughout the year. First, I will talk a little bit about the tech talks themselves, talk a little bit about um, you know, considerations when we're selecting um, the sterilization technology, talk about the approach to validation, and then thinking beyond 2020, thinking about sustainability uh, in our processes and in our industry, and then some concluding remarks. So why the tech talks? Um, you know, I think it's fitting that as part of the wrap up, it's worth sort of recapping uh, a little bit of what you've heard, but also it's worth, you know, thinking about the, the background and contextualizing you know, why we started the Tech Talk series earlier this year. I'd say primary focus was continued connection. You know, recognizing the remote working challenges that everyone faced with the onset of COVID. You know, as industry colleagues started to work more remotely, we saw this opportunity to connect via the Tech Talks. You know, it's been an opportunity for connection uh, for you to some of our technical teams. Um, that these are often people that you might only meet at a site meeting or an industry conference. You know, it's certainly my hope that you came to know our team a little bit better through the Tech Talk series, you know, as we continue that network between Theris AST and yourselves in industry. Over the course of the Tech Talk series, we've been delighted to be able to connect with over 5,000 attendees, you know, sharing some insights and knowledge of what we do every day. Uh, and sharing some of our vision of where we believe contract sterilization is advancing and indeed taking the opportunity to showcase those activities that we believe brings value to the industry. Suffice to say, you know, we as Steris hope you've enjoyed the tech talks and found them of value. Um, you know, and again, my role today is, is relatively easy in that I'm really presenting a wrap up of the whole series. So I think a good place to start in terms of recap is to talk a little bit about the technology and their selection in medical device sterilization. And again, I'll purposely keep this section brief so as not to repeat, you know, considering the amount of detail that's been provided throughout the Tech Talk series in, in 2020. But when compi compiling this first slide, I decided to label the title as it starts with the product because it really does. The sterilization technology 
process and validation is merely a means of getting that product to the patient application in a manner that's safe for the given application. On the other hand, the selection of the sterilization modality is a critical and impactful decision in product development and validation. The choice of sterilization technology is important and needs to be chosen, I would say, with a very holistic view of the product needs and the patient application. When selecting a technology and approaches to validation, it's important that this is considered in the context of Australia's Assurance Program. And this topic of uh, sterility assurance, you know, I will touch on as we go through the presentation today. It, it features on a number of the slides. But to explain further, you know, before the sterilization, the products themselves are manufactured in a clean environment. Before the manufacturing, raw materials are gathered as inputs to the manufacturer. So again, if you holistically think that all these steps contribute to the level of sterilization processing that needs to be applied to the product. And as I said, we will touch on that topic of sterility assurance at a few points throughout the presentation. As I mentioned already, it's important to clearly define the intended use of the product. This will direct manufacturers to require compliance and regulation. Understanding the product materials and sensitivities are an important facet of sterilization technology selection. And finally, knowing the regulatory pathway is critical when scoping out the sterilization process and moreover, designing a validation protocol. In the Tech Talk series, you heard in detail about our radiation technologies. You heard about the differences between electrons and photons and their impact on sterilization. You heard about the radiation sources, be it isotope or electrical. As you also have heard on numerous occasions, we at STERS do pride ourselves in being technology neutral and therefore seek to expand with whatever technology platforms address the needs of our customers. And certainly over the past year, we've announced a number of X-ray installations to address the capacity and technological needs of our customers. But as much as we invest in infrastructure, we equally work on the development of our processes and procedures. And these tech talks have been of great value in that it's given us a platform to share information on our technologies, on our methods, and on our approach to validation, and how they align with regulatory requirements. In the area of gaseous technologies, you've heard quite a bit about our efforts to improve EO processes through the deployment of the Sustainable EO Sterilization Services Program. This program, in collaboration with our customers, has demonstrated how reassessment of our approach to validation can deliver significant benefits to the products being sterilized. To date, we've initiated over 250 validations in the Sustainable EO program. PHP, while having a long history in healthcare sterilization, is relatively new to industrial sterilization. But we at STERS are convinced this technology has a future role in particular product applications and it's something we're actively deploying with a number of exciting customer validations. PHP is also an area where Steris is utilizing its experience and expertise in assisting with the development of dedicated equipment and process standards that will further assist its deployment and acceptance throughout our industry. The you have heard as mentioned throughout the Tech Talk series, Technologies will vary in terms of their compatibility with the medical device materials. It's primarily the reason we don't have a one fit all technology. As you heard in the tech talks, you know, radiation technologies have many benefits, quick processing times with no gaseous residuals, um, but they can't be deployed to all applications due to some material sensitivities, as you're seeing here in the graphic. This demonstrates why we need a portfolio of technology from which the most appropriate may be selected to meet the medical device product needs. Again, it places that emphasis on creating the best outcomes for the product and the patient application. If we move from technologies to now starting to think about the actual validation approach, as much as we 
you have that consideration of focus around selecting the right technology. Uh, equally, it's about deploying that technology in the right way. And central to that is adopting the right approach to validation. You know, the routine process is a consequence of the validation activity. And the routine process is what actually impacts the product. And therefore, careful consideration should be given to the design of the validation program. In terms of validation considerations, you know, I think on the first bullet point, I'm using the words invest in validation. And what I mean by that is using validation to achieve the most optimal routine sterilization process. And sometimes that investment is time. And it could be additional EO cycles, or it could be additional dose maps and radiation. But ultimately, more process definition leads to better routine processes. We really shouldn't just use validation as a means to making a regulatory submission. You know, the approach to validation you know, can vary you know, from being the quickest, most conservative approach, which ultimately might not deliver the most efficient or optimal process, to actually being one that's more detailed and data-driven, you know, that provides the best process de definition and ultimately the best process product outcomes. In our tech talks, you've heard about triplicate dose mapping to truly understand the process capability of the radiation process. You've heard about the opportunities that cycle calculation can provide in delivering a more efficient EO process. The opportunity lies when one considers the validation in the context of an overall sterility assurance program. If you know the microbiological challenge presented by the product, then an efficient process can be designed and validated to address that challenge. The validation needs to achieve the minimum criteria such as sterility assurance level. And it's always beneficial to do so with some additional conservativeness built in. However, excessive over processing can have a deleterious impact on the product. And this too should be recognized and balanced in the validation design. By means of an example, I have a number of graphical representations in the following slide. And again, they're just representation. And I think it's probably something you heard a bit more about uh, during our gas tech talk series. But in this first diagram, the purpose here is to show what I call the layers of overkill in the EO validation. And let's start. Our target you know, of the SAL at 10 to the minus six is shown at the center um, of this graphic. In ISO 3135, there are a number of validation approaches. The one most commonly used is the half cycle overkill approach. And this half cycle approach is one where we achieve a six log reduction in the BI population. And subsequently for a routine process, we double the EO exposure time to give us um, the overkill. However, what we sometimes forget is that there are multiple additional layers of overkill. So for example, the BI population itself and the resistance the resistance of the process challenge device relative to the product challenge, the inactivation achieved outside of EO exposure time, and the half cycle itself, be not more often typically seven or eight logs reduction of the BI. So while we have a need overkill to accommodate the product and its presentation, the point being made here is that we have multiple layers of overkill all contributing to an SEL that would far exceed our target of 10 to the minus six. So in the next two slides, I just want to focus a little bit you know, on one key area, which is the establishment of the microbiological challenge that is used to demonstrate the SAL. So in the graphic, the blue line shows our product challenge. I'm showing a product with a buy a burden of 1,000 CFU. And I purposely picked this number because actually it's the upper limit often applied to radiation processing. And often manufacturer clean rooms will have similar controls irrespective of sterilization technology. If we inactivate that by burden and extrapolate to our SAL of 10 to minus six, we get the inactivation time shown and labeled here as minimum SAL. However, what happens in reality is we use the BI with an additional three logs of growth, so minimum population of 10 to the six, of a microorganism of known high resistance 
and an EO that is bacillus atrophase. We then place the BI inside the process challenge device, such that the resistance of the PCD far exceeds that of the product itself. Historical validation practices were such that the product bio burden was often not considered. The product was actually represented by another BI inside the product and then turned an IPCD. And the EPCD validated to be more challenging than that already be like challenging product representation. So the consequence of this over challenging PCD is the inactivation time is over exaggerated. When one plots this time back to the blue line, you can see how we can arrive at excessive SALs. And in this example, we're showing here 10 to the minus 17. Now look at, if you like the same graph, but now look at it in a bit in a more measured fashion. So what this plot is showing is that the benefits of demonstrating the relativity of a PCD that has been shown to be appropriate. And again, relative to the actual product challenge, and please note, I'm still using our 10 to the 6 BI of known resistance. So I still have that additional overkill. I'm still using a half cycle validation method. And I'm still using a PCD that's more challenging than the product microbiological challenge. So again, I'm confident my SAL far exceeds the minimum required, but it is not as excessive. How we achieve this comparative resistance demonstra demonstration, we perform a fractional cycle where no growth is observed on product test of sterility, whereas growth is recovered from the PCDs. This demonstrates that the PCD is a greater challenge than the product itself, and may then be used in half cycles to demonstrate the achievement of the SAL. And again, like radiation validations, you know, the products used for the test of sterility must be represented with the normal production with typical bio burden. Again, this links to that topic of the sterilization validation being part of a wider sterility assurance program. And again, as you look to this graphic, you know, it makes us think about the opportunities, even further opportunities with cycle calculation methods that you heard a little bit about in the tech talk. You know, it might be more cycles, but greater definition and greater understanding of the inactivation process. Again, it's that understanding of the inactivation process and quantifying our conservativeness does allow us to be a lot more measured in what we do, which ultimately can only benefit the outcomes of the device being sterilized. In our opening tech talk um, earlier this year, um, I think it may have been March or April, um, I did briefly mention some of the R&D activity that we're undertaking at STARES. And in essence, this work, to fully appreciate the inactivation occurring in our processes, such that we can design appropriately to the product needs. We continue to examine microbiology techniques such as slow cytometry to help inform and go beyond the use of traditional clay counts. You know, traditional clay counts will tell us, you know, something is alive or dead. You know, tools like slow cytometry can help us understand the transitions from live to damaged to ultimately dead microorganisms. And again, having that definition and understanding, you know, we can apply additional conservativeness beyond our SAL requirement, but in a lot more measured fashion. So again, this, the greater our understanding and quantification, you know, the less excessive we'll be in the delivery of that conservativeness. Now that we talked a little bit about, you know, um, our current state, I think it's worthwhile now thinking of future state and certainly, you know, we believe sustainability is a key theme for the present and future uh, of our sterilization industry. In our first talk, tech talk, we reviewed the same slide, but really with a historical perspective. If we now re-examine the current foundational perspective and attempt to do some crystal ball gazing of where we think our future may bring us, I think it's fair that we would envisage a key team being that of sustainability. It is our belief that sustainability will, will be achieved through a myriad of actions leading to greater technology diversification, greater precision in what we do, and increased innovation in our technologies. A key enabler 
The such will be the continued contextualization of sterilization, again, within that framework of the sterility assurance program, which is designed to deliver products to patients with the required sterility assurance. And as we advance our standards and regulations, you know, we'll continue to develop in tandem and provide the parameters and requirements for ensuring we continue to operate to our excellent high standards. We want to take the technology diversification. Again, this is a slide you've seen previously. You know, and it shows our reliance on two technologies and the need for diversification. You know, gamma radiation EO make up approximately 90% of our sterilization capacity. Our future state you know, will be the deployment of other technologies, like X-ray, for instance, to deliver to the capacity you need in a long-term and sustainable manner. As an industry, we'll work to add more gaseous and vapor technologies to make them available to our portfolio to offer you know, viable and meaningful technologies with hopefully equivalent material compatibility. Technology precision. But one thing that during equipment commissioning and process validation, we do gather significant amounts of data and information regarding the capability of our processes. In combination, we continue to evolve our methods and procedures to be best in class to the benefit of our customers. Sometimes those developments can increase the burden and workload. So for instance, increased radiation dose mapping. But in parallel, we and Steros continue to invest and develop in technology that reduces such burden. The example shown here is robotics being developed to assist in dosimeter placement and retrieval in our radiation process. Similarly, we currently use radiation modeling you know, to assist with radiation shield design, equipment design. However, in the future, we expect to use such technology to assist with process design and qualification. So this slide is thinking about, you know, I think, innovation but beyond our current boundaries. And what I'd say is what I spoke about in the last slide, I'd refer to it as iterative innovation, whereby you know, we improve and enhance. But we also see opportunities to challenge our well-established approaches. And the example I'm sharing here um, refers to e-beam processing. I think our approach on sustainable EO you know, is another um, example of this. But regarding e-beam, due to concerns with uh, material activation, uh, most e-beam medical device sterilization is conducted at 10 MeVs or less. However, if you read ISO 3137, it does not limit us to 10. It actually says we should assess induced radioactivity if we exceed. And currently, X-ray is typically above the stated threshold of 5 MeV. And as a consequence, materials have and continue to be assessed. The positive outcome from that is we're building up more and more information you know, about the performance of materials and the outcomes that are realized that processing with these energies. And we at STARS are delighted to be finalizing a manuscript on this very topic with a number of other collaborators that will be shared in an upcoming AME industrial sterilization publication. So such information, while it's immediately beneficial to X-ray processing, may also provide insights valuable to eBay. And again, as shown in the graphic here, increasing the energy of the process has the potential you know, for you know, improved dose distribution and penetration. And while this would have immediate benefits to impact throughput and capacity, it more for, could widen the scope of products suitable for e-beam processing in the future. In our Tech Talk series, you've heard us talk a lot about our sustainable EO uh, program. You know, the program we launched in 2017 is something we're quite proud of. Uh, I'm leaving the slide up here to highlight all the benefits that have been realized. However, I'm going to talk on this topic with a slightly different perspective in that I believe a key enabler for the success of the program has been recognizing that EO sterilization is part of a wider product drill the assurance program. You know, through the use of comparative resistance studies, we're able to relate the design of a process challenge device to the microbiological challenge of the product. 
Hence, the clean manufacturing of the device becomes a factor in the validation of the process, similar to how we validate dose and radiation sterilization. We have achieved the benefits of sustainable EO while maintaining a conservative overkill approach. We are often asked, is this the bioburden-based method? And it is not. The bioburden-based method described in TRIP135 you know, remains the method for our industry to further define and realize. Equally, the development and deployment of parametric release, coupled with a deeper understanding of process capability, you know, will help us deliver even more improvements um, in process definition and precision around EO processing. Again, this is the slide I think I showed at the, the initial webinar. And again, it relates back to the, you know, the opening slide of this section, you know, uh, that really our focus around the, the, the medical device products. You know, as we improve process and technology and create diversity, the real need is to make sure we're fit for purpose for the future needs of medical device manufacturing. And again, if you think about products and technologies, you know, such things as sensor devices, 3D print materials, nanotechnology, you know, we need to ensure we've got the, the technologies and the validation approaches that will actually allow us to bring these products and provide them in a sterile fashion. In terms of standards and regulatory advancement, you know, it's great to see innovation and development, but in tandem, we must have that equaled um, with our standards being developed. If I go back again to our work in sustainable EO, we utilize the ISO 13135 to both underpin our approach, but also as a means of educating uh, our industry on our approach. You know, we observed how a standard could point us in the right direction to deliver the improvements that we desired. Hence, we see a significant value in our industry in having well-defined standards with the best of science and knowledge. Much of the scientific and publication work we do is to assist in the advancement of such, such standards. And this year, we were very proud to have two articles, one on X-ray and one other on VHP, selected for the AME Industrial Sterilization publication that was issued back in August. And we will continue to support future publications as a means of sharing our work. And again, equally, this Tech Talk series has been you know, something our team have embraced with great enthusiasm to, to share you know, our knowledge and expertise around our technologies and our, our methods. And the feedback and questions we've received from you help us determine where we should be adding focus to arrive at you know, future shared knowledge and understanding. So a few concluding reflections as we bring the 2020 Tech Talk series to a close. And uh, you know, 2020, um, you know, a year of managing the coronavirus, and it's easy to reflect on it being a year of the, if you like, the scourge of COVID-19. But I think we shouldn't forget the positives and achievements from the year. You know, in, in my own personal opinion, we we've had equal teams for 2020 of agility and innovation. If you think of the innovations around 3D, you know, printed face shields innovative respirator design, you know, hygiene products, expedited regulatory frameworks like the FDA and EUA, and just the overall community collaboration. I think the level of collaboration has been a highlight. You know, where companies and organizations coming together and bringing expertise to deliver to the greater good. And ultimately, the importance of healthcare has never been more, you know, to the fore in everybody's minds. And we at STARS, you know, I've worked with our customers to deliver the solutions we could and contribute where we can. We are particularly proud of how we brought our expertise in decontamination and sterilization solutions to the challenge of PPE supply. The technical expertise and know-how in adapting equipment and technology, such as our VHP technology, uh, to meet the desired application has shown how inventive and agile we can be when faced with the challenge of something like COVID-19. So given our proximity to the end of the year, um, I think as you look into 2021, 
you know, we've seen the last month or so, it's been an extraordinary acceleration of vaccine approval and production. I think the enormity of the task ahead in producing sufficient quantities of the vaccine is highlighted in the numbers shown on this slide, uh, recently documented in nature.com. Earlier this week, I watched a documentary on BBC titled The Race for the Vaccine. It described the journey the researchers of Oxford University have taken to develop their vaccine. And as you can see from the picture, you know, the importance of clean and sterile and the role, the significant role that they play in such an endeavor. And now if you conceptualize and magnify that to the production of billions of doses, you know, reflect and consider the role of our industry and the services play in the supply of critical clean room pharma and biopharma materials and supplies. Certainly, we at Stairs are proud to be able to provide products, sterilization capacity, and technical know how to our customers as we all contribute to the continued efforts in addressing COVID 19. So, as I said, this brings an end to our 2020 Tech Talks. Um, I would like to take the opportunity to thank you all for your participation in these and hope you found them informative and beneficial. You know, speaking on behalf of the Stairs Tech teams, we've been delighted to present on these topics and share our experience and knowledge. And as you've heard throughout the series, our team are enthusiastic about the work that we do and the value we try and bring to our customers. As you probably know, we've made YouTube recordings of all the Tech Talks and they're available via the stairsast.com website. Thanks again for joining us today and this concludes the webinar. 